the cold-faced guard allowed Fan Xian to enter the temple. Fan Xian was worried that it was a trap, so he asked a few more questions. The man was very puzzled when he saw that Fan Xian didn't even know what the temple was. Fan Xian was not interested in these mythical stories and hesitated, but still went into the temple. As soon as he entered the temple, Fan Xian saw a group of sword-wielding guards guarding the courtyard. He had no choice but to enter the side hall. Looking left and right, he found that there was no ambush, and he was relieved. There were no gods in the side hall, but there were murals on the walls of the temple showing people capturing giant beasts and passing on rituals. Fan Xian, who came from modern times, naturally didn't believe in these so-called gods. He picked up the fruit on the offering table and took a bite. He also muttered that if there is really a god, let him send a messenger to tell him why he had gone this way. As he was talking, the offering table suddenly moved, which frightened Fan Xian that the pears in his hands fell. When he hesitated to lift the tablecloth, he saw a beautiful little fairy looking at him in amazement with a chicken leg. The two looked at each other. Fan Xian only felt that all the blood in his body was flowing to his heart, and even the operation of his brain slowed down. The woman was Lin Wanner, the daughter of Prime Minister Lin Ruofu. She saw Fan Xian's appearance was very interesting, and he didn't look like a bad person, so she got up from the bottom of the table. Fan Xian saw that she was not fantasizing, but he vomited blood when he was excited. Lin Wanner stepped forward to check with concern, and Fan Xian comforted her casually that he got used to his vomiting. Lin Wanner was amused by his playful words. The atmosphere between the two was super good. Suddenly, there was an urgent call from the maid in the courtyard. Lin Wanner stuck out her tongue, gave the chicken leg to Fan Xian, and left in a hurry. Before leaving, she gave him the chicken leg in her hand and ran out happily. Fan Xian was stunned by Lin Wanner's look back at the smile, only to realize that he forgot to ask her name, so he hurried out to chase, but unfortunately Lin Wanner had already left in the carriage. Lin Wanner was in poor health since she was a child, and her family was very strict. Every time she came out, she would sneak out to play, but she didn't expect to meet Fan Xian this time. The maid understood her mood, but was also worried about her body. Sure enough, Lin Wanner coughed up blood again when she was excited, but she couldn't help laughing again when she remembered what Fan Xian said just now. Emperor Qing returned to the palace after offering sacrifices to the temple. After the palace ceremony, he took the initiative to mention Fan Xian. He thought that there must be something wrong with Fan Xian being able to pass through the many dark posts beside the temple. Halfway through the journey, a team of guards in armor came rushing forward and the Gong Dian immediately had someone stop them. Emperor Qing asked the leader to answer. After the Imperial Army left, Emperor Qing's carriage stopped by the roadside. He casually asked Gong Dian who was the young man who entered the temple. Gong Dian reported that it was Fan Xian, the illegitimate son of the minister Fan raised up in Danzhou City. Only then did he realize that Fan Xian was able to enter the temple, probably because of Emperor Qing's arrangement. Emperor Qing asked Gong Dian again, why did he let Fan Xian in, and who was the one who put a maid on the way into the city to ruin Fan Xian's reputation? Gong Dian answered one by one hesitantly. Finally, Emperor Qing asked him calmly if he liked the paintings that the crown prince gave him. Gong Dian was so shocked that he broke out in a cold sweat. The driver took Fan Xian to the door of the Fan Mansion. Fan Xian got out of the carriage and knocked on the door, but there was no response. After a while, a maid opened the side door and greeted him to go in. The maid told him that the master had not returned to the mansion, and this was the second lady's arrangement. Fan Xian didn't look for trouble. He followed the maid into the house with a good temper, but found that everyone on the way was very careful. After inquiring, he found out that the second lady was taking a nap. This second lady was taking a nap in the backyard, and no one in the whole mansion dared to speak and her power in the fan mansion was evident. At this time, a young man in silk clothes chased the accountant with a stick and ran out. Seeing his flamboyant appearance, Fan Xian could also guess that this man must be the second lady's precious son, Fan Xia. Fan Xia didn't ask who he was when he saw Fan Xian, but asked him unceremoniously if he knew who he was, 
and asked him to open the box in his hand to show him. Fan Xian didn't get angry but laughed when he heard the words, and let him try it himself. On the other hand, the second lady learned that Fan Xian had entered the mansion, and specially ordered the servants to take him to the courtyard and wait until she woke up. Fan Xia seemed to be domineering and arrogant, but in fact he had no sense of government. He couldn't open Fan Xian's box after a long time. Fan Xian teased him amusingly. If he let the servants beat him to death, would the servants listen or not? Fan Xia thought stupidly for a long time, but he was dazed by him. Fan Xian followed the maid all the way to the inner courtyard, but was told that the second lady was taking a nap and asked him to wait here. He knew that this was the second lady's disapproval, but there was no objection on the face. Gong Gin brought a few paintings and calligraphy to meet the prince Li Cheng Qian. The prince saw that Gong Gin was very friendly, but Gong Gin tore up his favorite paintings and calligraphy in front of him and asked the prince to take back the gifts he had given to him. The prince's face gradually darkened, and Gong Gin felt distressed and afraid. He told the prince one by one what happened today. He was afraid that Emperor Qing was dissatisfied with his private dealings with him and he also stated that he no longer liked the paintings and calligraphy. Although the prince was angry, but had no choice but to withdraw the calligraphy and painting. The second lady got up from a nap and asked about Fan Xian's situation. Unexpectedly, she learned that Fan Xian had also moved a chair to sleep in the yard. She went out to wake him up angrily, accusing Fan Xian of not being polite, but Fan Xian politely followed her. At this time, Fan Xia who had reacted, came to Fan Xian with a stick to settle the account. The second lady deliberately avoided the situation. Once Fan Xian and Fan Xia fought, Fan Xian would fall into the trap. Fan Xian didn't feel panic. He sat down leisurely to watch Fan Xia toss. Just when Fan Xi was out of breath and wanted to do something, Fan Ruoro arrived in time to stop him. Fan Ruoro was the eldest young lady in the house and she had been in charge of Fan Cixia since she was a child. When Fan Cixia saw her, it was like a mouse meeting a cat, so he had to honestly apologize to Fan Xian and admit his mistake. The second lady didn't expect that Fan Ruoro would disrupt the plan even after all the calculations, and when she looked at the stupid son who only wanted money, she felt angry and anxious. The brothers and sisters were very happy to meet again, and when they came to Ruoro's room, they saw that it was full of rare treasures. Ruoro told him that these were given by others, and they were all for the red mansion that Fan Xian had told her. Fan Xian didn't expect that the story he told his sister would be known to everyone, but he didn't know how to explain it, so he had to let her misunderstand. The two brothers and sisters were chatting, and the servants came to report that it was Lord Fan who had returned to the mansion, and asked Fan Xian to meet him in the study room. Fan Xian packed the chicken legs in a wooden box and asked Ruoro to keep them for him, and then he went to the study room alone. 